الرحيم وإذ قال لقمان لابنه وهو يعظه يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لظلم عظيم وقال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة النساء إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد افترى اسما عظيما وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في نفس السورة إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرب الله فقد ضل ضلالا بعيدا وقال عز وجل كما ورد في سورة الحج وإذ بوأنا لإبراهيم مكان البيت أن لا تشرك بي شيئا إلى قوله تعالى ومن يشرك بالله فكأنما خر من السماء فتقطفه الطير أو تهوي به الريح في مكان صحيق وقال جل وعلا كما ورد في سورة الزمر ولقد أوحي إليك وإلى الذين من قبلك لئن أشركت ليحبطن عملك ولتكونن من الخاسرين صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي dear brothers and sisters in islam as i told you after the last session regarding our discussion about iman that some of the points connected with the last topic that is how to get real iman and where can we get it from some of the points i couldn't complete yesterday but today i'm not going to take any time for that i will try inshallah in my subsequent topics to include those points also but now i want to proceed straight off with the next subject and that is what is shirk that is what is meant by associating someone or something with allah or ascribing any partner to allah or making or accepting any one or anything equal to allah whether in his person or in his attributes or his position or his status or his authority or his rights this is actually in brief the definition of shirk so what does it mean and what are the ramifications you know of this shirk what are the branches what are the different forms but before i proceed to that let me first of all translate and briefly explain the ayat which i have recited in the beginning First of all, it was ayah number thirteen of Surah Al-Luqman. This says, "By his call, Al-Luqman will live near him, and he will be his son." And remember the time when Luqman said to his son, and he was admonishing him, or exhorting him, or advising him, "Ya Bunaya, O my son, la tushrik billah." don't associate anyone with allah don't ascribe any partners unto allah don't make anything or anyone equal to allah in the shirk al zulm al azim verily this shirk is the most tremendous and awesome 
and greatest sin or iniquity or injustice. This is the biggest wrong that can be done. So what is shirk? The tremendous and awesome and biggest injustice and wrong. According to this ayah of the Quran. Then I recited two ayat from Surah An-Nisa. Ayah number 48 and ayah number 116. And the major portion of both the ayat is the same. Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika li man yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad 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 iftara isman azima and in the second ayah wa man yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalan ba'ida but the first part is the same and that is the most important inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi Allah will never forgive that shirk may be made with him, be done with him, committed with him, anything or anybody may be made equal to him. Or he may, you know, be treated as equal, as partner with someone. This is the greatest sin, unpardonable. Short of that, any sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive. To whom he may like. Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushra kabi. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik ali man yasha. And now the ayah 48 ends. Wa man yushrik billah. Whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faqad iftira isma azima. So he had committed the biggest sin. And ayah number 116 ends. Wa man yushrik billah. Faqad dhalla dhalalam ba'ida. Whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has gone astray very far off, very far off from the right path. Now let us come to the ayat of Surah Al-Hajj. Here the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is being mentioned. By his babwa de la de Ibrahima makan al-bayt, and when we told Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam that this is the place where you should build the house for me, Allah tushrik bi shaya. The first commandment given to him was never associate anybody, anything with me. Never commit any form of shirk with me. And after some ayat, you know, we find the words, wa man yushrik billah. فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَقْتَفُهُ الطَّيْرُ وَتَحْوِي بِهِ الرِّيْحُ فِي بَكَانٍ سَحِيقٍ Whosoever commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if he has fallen from the heaven and now he is at the mercy of the birds of prey. They might tear him off or the wind. It might take him to any road ditch in which he falls and is torn into pieces. This is the simile used here to what end this shirk can lead a man, a woman, a human being. And let me mention here also, you know Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he has three places among the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are very peculiar to him. Ittakhadullahu Ibrahim khalila. Allah adopted him as his friend, Khalil. Inni jailuka linnaase imama. I am going to make you imam for the whole of humanity. And you know, he is Abu Lambiya. How many prophets and messengers of Allah? They were from his progeny. Either, you know, the line which started from Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam and Hazrat Yaqub and so many prophets of the line of Bani Israel. They are all sons of Ibrahim. <coughs> and the last of all, who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Son of Ibrahim again. The second line, which was there from Ismail alayhi salatu wa sallam. But you know the greatest certificate that is given to Ibrahim in the Quran, the greatest testimonial which is given to him in Quran six times is, وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ 
He was not from among the mushriks. So it is the biggest testimonial that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to a person, to a man, to a human being. Now, let me come to the last ayah. And that is from the last section of Surah Al-Zumr. وَلَقَدْ وَهِيَ إِلَيْكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing here Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has been revealed to you before. وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُ And it was revealed to all the prophets who came before you. لَإِنْ نَشْرَكْتَ Even if you commit shirk, لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكُ all of your deeds you have, that you have earned up till now will go in vain, will go away, vanish, will be multiplied by zero. Laim nashrakta, even you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you commit shirk, all of your deeds will go in vain, will be, you know, reduced to a zero. Wala takunanna min al khasirin. And you will also become one of those who are in loss. So this is, you know, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, you know, the big crime, the unpardonable sin. This is shirk. Now let me explain it in another form. We have seen before, you know, in six lectures, six sessions, our deen is deen al-tawheed. Islam is Deen al-Tawheed. If you want to express Islam in one word, what is it? It is Deen al-Tawheed. And I told you, the basic Iman, or you may say comprehensive Iman, is Iman Billah or Tawheed. We know that in, in Iman Mujmal, only Iman Billah is mentioned. Amantu Billahi wa Malai wa Amantu Billahi kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifatihi wa qabil tu jami ahkamihi iqra'um bil lisani wa tasdiqum bil qur'an. Now shirk is the opposite of tawheed. And you know there is a saying, a proverb in Arabic, Tawraful ashiyahu bi azdadiha. Things can be more understood in the context of the antonyms, the opposites. You can appreciate what is day if you have seen night. If you have never seen night, you can't understand what you mean by day. You know it by contrast. Simultaneous contrast makes things clear. So if you want to understand what is Tawheed, you must understand what is Shirk. And if you want to understand what is Shirk, you must understand what is Tawheed. So they are actually antonyms to each other. And let me make a statement, although it might appear to be in the very beginning very categorical, but I'll prove that this is correct. The statement is, all good, whether it concerns thought or deed, any good, whether in action, in deed or in thought, is a corollary of Tawheed. Every evil, whether in action, deed, or of thought, or of aqidah, it is necessarily a corollary of shirk. That is my categorical statement. Just like, you know, a tree has a root, then a trunk, then branches and leaves. Every leaf of the tree is connected with the with the root. So actually the root of deen is Tawheed. So whatever is there in this tree, tree, the trunk, the branches, the leaves, the fruit, the flowers, they are all actually connected with this root. And the opposite is also correct. All evil, whether in thought or in action, indeed, actually they are the branches, they are the corollaries of shirk. Now, the forms of shirk, the branches of shirk, the shades of shirk are very numerous, so many. And it becomes very difficult at times 
to recognize this shirk. It takes different garbs, different dresses, different forms. And that is why, let me quote a couple from Allama Iqbal here. Barahimi nazar paida magar mushkil se hoti hai. To recognize shirk. And he, here Allama Iqbal says, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He had that understanding, you know, that capability, capacity of recognize, recognizing shirk wherever it was, in whichever form it was. Barahimi nazar paida magar mushkil se hoti hai. Habis chup chup ke seeno mein bana leti hai tasweerein. You have idols within your heart. You are not worshipping the idols, the asnam. Before you, there is nothing. But you have the idols in your heart, in your chest. And this will, inshallah, become absolutely clear today. So there is a need that we should have the capability and the capacity and the ability to recognize and understand all forms of shirk and recognize shirk in whatever garb and cover it appears. There is a Persian couplet, Bahar Rangwe ke khahi jama mi posh manandave qadak rami shanasam. You may take on any dress of any color, but I will recognize you from your, what should be the stature. I will recognize you. So actually we should have the ability, capability and ability to recognize shirk, whichever form it might take. It keeps on changing colors. It keeps on taking different forms from time to time. Maybe you understand the shirk of a thousand years before, but you cannot understand the shirk of today. This disease has appeared in another form an absolutely new guard today. So you have to acquire the ability to recognize shirk in whatever garb, in whatever form, in whatever color it appears. Now to understand, you know, different types of shirk, let us see how we can divide different kinds of shirk, different categories of shirk. So the ulama, mostly, they divide shirk as a shirk fil aqidah and a shirk fil amal. Fil aqidah, you are professing and you, you yourself say that you believe in something which is shirk. Someone says, well, Jesus is son of God. And he is professing it. He is saying it himself. So he is, he is committing shirk. It is fil aqidah. But there might be a shirk which is only in action. If you analyze the deed and action and the behavior of a person, you find there is a shirk in it. Maybe that person who is committing that action or deed, he himself doesn't know that I am committing shirk. Is a shirk fil amal. You have to analyze what are the motives, what's the thought behind this deed or action. So there can be shirk fil amal and there can be shirk fil aqidah. Then another, you know, classification is there is apparent and evident shirk, absolutely apparent and evident. This we call a shirkul jali, clear, absolutely apparent, absolutely evident. Then there is hidden shirk, implied shirk and imperceptible shirk. This is a shirkul khafi. For example, I'm, I will give the details later on, but let me quote here a hadith. Man salla yurai faqad ashraka. Wa man sama yurai faqad ashraka. Wa man tasaddaqa yurai faqad ashraka. Whosoever is praying, but he wants to show off to the others that he is a very muttaqi person, a very pious person. He has already committed shirk. He is praying. Whosoever keeps psalm, he is fasting. But he wants to show to the people. 
he is a very pious person. He gives, three, he gives you know, three fasts every month. If he wants that, that exhibition, Fakad Ashraka. He has committed shit. Even to the extent that if you are praying and when you are going in prostration, usually your sajda, one prostration, for example, if it comprises five seconds, ten seconds, but when you feel that someone is looking at you, now you increase the duration of your sajda. Now you are there for ten seconds. You have committed shirk. You are doing this prostration partly for Allah. The original five seconds were for Allah. And the additional five seconds are for the person to whom you are showing. So actually for this sajda, there are two masjood. You have committed sin. You have committed shirk. So shirk, al shirk jali, al shirk khafi, the hidden shirk, imperceptible shirk, and the shirk which is evident, absolutely apparent and clear. But as far as I think, for a better understanding of all the shades of shirk and kinds of shirk, the better classification would be. There are three types of shirk. We shall discuss according to this classification. The shirk fizat, associating someone in the person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Personal association in his own person, in his zat, making someone equal to him as a person. This is the biggest shirk, the ugliest shirk, the most naked shirk. Then number two, shirk fi sifat, ascribing the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to someone else in quality or quantity. The attributes which are exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you are ascribing that attribute to someone else or something else. Or if the attribute is common between Allah and the creation, the creatures, but when you use that adjective or attribute for Allah, it means something else. And when you are using the same word for men or other, you know, creatures, it means something else. If you confuse, if you make both things equal, this is a shirk fi sifat, making shirk in the attributes of Allah. Then lastly, there is the shirk to associate someone in the status of Allah, in the authority of Allah, in the, you know, rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his position to make somebody equal to him in rights, in authority. That is shirk fil hukuk, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are exclusive to him. And you have made someone partner unto him in that, in those rights, in, in any one of those rights, it becomes shirk. So a shirk fizat, associating someone in the person of Allah. Shirk fizat, ascribing the attributes of Allah to someone else or to something else, whether quantitatively or qualitatively. And the third, a shirk fil hukuk you know, making partner of Allah in his authority, in his rights. Now, with these preliminary points, let us now come to the first, and that is a shirk fizat. As I said, this is the most heinous, most naked, ugliest shirk. And that is why we find in the Quran, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ghab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appears in the most severe form regarding this shirk fissat. 
बिकॉज इफ यू मेक सम वन पार्टनर टू अल्लाह इन इज पर्सन ही बिकम एब्सोल्यूटली इक्वल नाउ वट आर दी टू फॉर्म्स विच दिस सिर्फ फिजात हैज टेकन थ्रू आउट हिस्ट्री देर आर टू फॉर्म्स वन एंड द मोर अगली एंड द मोर नेकेड and the more heinous form of this shirk fizat is the irony of fate that it appeared in the ummas of the prophets and messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala people who believed in the prophets people to whom messengers of allah came who claim that we believe in these prophets and messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who should have been absolutely free from shirk is the irony of fate that the most heinous form of shirk was committed by them what is that to say allah has adopted a son there has been any son to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or daughter of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a son or a daughter of anybody any person is absolutely equal to him the progeny of a horse is a horse the progeny of man is a man it becomes absolutely equal it is kuf absolutely equal you know the status is the same this is the worst form of shirk and you know i need not tell you you know the worst form appeared in whom people who claim that they believe in hazrat isa alay salatu wassalam and they believe jesus is the son of allah son of god and in the same way although not as a whole but at certain time and certain sects of the jews also believed hazrat uzair alai salatu wassalam to be son of allah qalat al yahud uzair ibn allah wa qalat al nasara masih ibn allah and thirdly you know the pagan arabs especially the quraish of makka they claimed they are they were the progeny of ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam and they were they were the progeny of ismail alayhi salatu wassalam and they claimed that they were following ibrahim but they had the aqida the false aqida that angels are daughters of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why you know all the idols of the arabs they are feminine they were goddesses uzza lat manat these are all feminine names they said they are daughters of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now i have given you three examples ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam people who believed in him claim to be following ibrahim and they committed this heinous this ugliest crime that they said that the angels the malaika they are the daughters of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the jews who claimed that they are unitarians they are the mawhidin but among them also there were people who said that uzair ibn allah hazrat uzair alayhi salatu wassalam is son of allah but you know the most ugliest form it appeared in the christians this become this became an integral part of their dogma jesus christ is son of god this is the essential part the very basis of their dogma that is why 
I can't go, I can't give you many examples, you know, because I know the time is very much limited. I have in Urdu six tapes on this subject of one hour each. But today I have to finish the whole subject in two hours. So I have to be very brief. But those of you who know Urdu, can understand Urdu, they can get those six tapes so that they can find more details. Here I can only give you an overview, a brief account. You know, you can put in more details yourself, inshallah. Let me quote here four verses, four ayat from the last portion, last section of Surah to Maryam. And you just appreciate, try to understand the wrath of Allah, the ghadaban of Allah, the anger of Allah, which appears in the Quran regarding this form of shirk. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَى And they say that Rahman has adopted a son. لَقَدْ جَيْتُمْ شَيْيًا إِدَّى You have brought and you have concocted a very absurd idea, a very ugly idea. Takadu samavatu yata fattar naminhu wa tanshakul ardu wa takhilul jibalu hadda andawli rahmani walada. This is such a big crime in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is such a big insult to the person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that. The skies and heavens, they are, maybe, they split and crack. And the earth also splits on it. And the mountains may fall and crumble down. walada That these people are calling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some son or daughter. Walad, you know, goes both ways. So, وَمَا يَمَّغِي لِلْرَحْمَانِ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَ It doesn't behove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should have so any son or daughter. Why? Please understand this point. Only those things or beings need daughters or sons who know they are going to die. We know we shall die. We want that we shall not remain, but our name should continue. And our name will continue through our sons. Because actually it's a continuation of the personality. It's a continuation of my own personality. My sons, then sons of my sons, it's actually a continuation of my own self. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to die. There's no, not going to be any end for him. He doesn't need any son or daughter. Above all these things. That is why it's an insult to him. And then as I told you, son is just equal to the father. He is the same as father. Son of a donkey is a donkey. Son of a horse is a horse. Son of a man is a man. So this is the biggest form of making anybody equal to the, the person to whom he, you are saying that he is the son of him. So this is the worst form of shirk. And you know what's the position of Surah Al-Ikhlas in the Quran? Rub'ul Quran. Sulusul Quran. The Prophet said it is equal to one third of Quran. Why? Because the most comprehensive surah repudiating this sort of shirk. Allahu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakullahu Kufu Allahad. Because the sun is Kufu. That is, make, let me make it more simple. Son of a Sayyid is a Sayyid. Son of a Mughal is a Mughal. Son of a Rajput is a Rajput. So that way you make him absolutely equal 
دس از وٹ وی کال کف ولم یق الہ کف ون احد دیر از نو کف فار ہم دیر از نو بڈی ایکول ٹو ہم ہی بی گاٹ ناٹ ناٹ ہی واز بی گاٹن ہی ڈنٹ ہیو اینی پیرنٹس ناٹ ہی ہیڈ اینی چلڈرن اور سنز اور ڈاکٹر اور اینی پروجنی قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد and there is the last ayah of surah bani israil is as comprehensive as the surah al ikhlas qul alhamdulillah alladhi lam yattakhiz walada wa lam yakun lahu sharikun fil mulk wa lam yakun lahu waliyyun min al zul wa kabbirhu takbira in one ayah five types of shirk have been denied and repudiated but you know in the very beginning the beginning is lam yattakhiz walad ah he didn't take anybody as his son or daughter so this is actually the form of shirk which is the most naked most heinous and the ugliest shirk according to the quran and i told you this the irony of fate that those people who believe in revealed religions who believed in revealed books they have committed this crime this type of shirk now the other form of the shirk fi zat it appeared in those religions which have a philosophical beginning those who have studied the subject of comparative religion they know there are two types of religion revealed religions and philosophical religions because i told you in the early discussion on iman that actually the problems and questions in philosophy and in iman they are common the metaphysical questions what is this universe where from has it come is it forever was it there forever always present who are we what is evil what is good what's knowledge what are the sources of knowledge what's our life what is the psychology of man so all these questions they are basically common to religion and philosophy and i told you that the answers to these questions were given through two sources philosophers sages thinkers they thought about these questions maybe socrates maybe confucius maybe mahavir maybe shankaracharya maybe ramanuja all these people they were philosophers plato they have grappled with these questions given answers to these questions and we know them as philosophies this is the philosophy of socrates this is the philosophy of plato this is idealism this is realism and so on and the other source of the answers came from the prophets and they claimed that they had a special source of knowledge which came to them that is why they know these things through that source of knowledge so the questions are common but the mode of answering is different so there have been religions in the world who are basically philosophical religions most of the hindu religions i am not saying religion hinduism is not a one religion there are so many religions in hinduism hinduism actually is a culture in hinduism you have shades of opinion who have you know top most tawhid then there are the worst mushrikeen then there are the atheists don't believe in any god whatsoever and they are all hindus so actually most of the religions of chinese origin and indian and indian origin they are actually philosophical now this shirk fi zat in the philosophical religion has taken two forms number 1 the pantheism 
all this universe is itself God. I want to explain it today. Pantheism, pan, this denotes everything. Pantheism, everything is divine. Why, you know? Because there was a question. If we believe in a creator, how did he create this world? One opinion was, that just as a carpenter can make a table or a chair, but he needs wood first. The wood should be there. Out of the wood, he can make a table. So matter was also present, and God was also present. They are both Kadim. God created this world out of matter. So this is actually you have to accept that two things are Qadeem, they, they exist forever. But there were people who didn't accept this dualism, they wanted to be monotheists. Their logic, their intellect, they required some monotheism. But how to visualize? One of the explanations was that God himself took the form of this universe. The example is, when the ice melts, it becomes water. Now if you ask, where is the ice? It's nowhere. This water is ice. And if you boil this water, it becomes steam. Now if you want to know, where is, has that water gone? Well, the steam is water. The steam is ice. The steam is water. Because the ice took the form of water and the water took the form of steam. In the same way, they said, everything that exists is actually divine. The creator has himself taken this form. So everything actually is part of Godhead. Nothing is outside it. This is pantheism and this is the worst form of shirk. God himself has taken the form of this universe. But that was in search of unity. Give the devil his due. Their search was for something very good. But they were led astray. And please don't confuse it with Bahadatul Wujud. That's something else. Pantheism is Hamagust. Pantheism is Kufr. Shirk of the worst order. It is the shirk fizat. Vahadatul wujud is something else. The unity of existence is something else. That I will inshallah explain when I talk about the shirk fizat. But now there is another form of shirk fizat which appeared in these philosophical religions. And that is the principle of incarnation. God takes on the form of human beings. He manifests himself in the form of human beings. Krishna, he was incarnation, God incarnate. And according to the some of the Christians, they also believe in the Laha Huwal Masihubru Maryam. In Allah, who are Masih Ibn Maryam? Allah is Masih. Actually, Allah has taken the form. Allah has appeared as Masih. In Arabic, we call it Hulul. So, actually, this is the principle of incarnation. God incarnate. God appearing in the form of human beings. This is another very bad, very naked very ugly form of Shirk Fizzat. And this has appeared in some of the philosophical religions and also some of the revealed religions also. Not in the religions, the followers of some revealed religions. Though they claim to be following the revealed religions. They, they claim that, you know, Bible is revealed. And we know that Jesus, Hazrat Masih was a messenger of Allah. 
But people who claim that they are followers of Jesus, they believe him to be son of God, and they also, some of them believe that he is himself God incarnated. So these are different forms of Sheikh Fizzat. Now, let me make a point here, and that's very important. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. Thank God, once, twice, thrice, that this ummah has been saved up till now from this form of shirk. Although in poetry you find such things, in the poetry praising the Prophet, which we call Naat, the poets have said such things. Let me quote here a couplet. Wohi jo mustaviye arsh tha khuda ho kar Utar pada wo madine mein mustafa ho kar What is it? The same person who was on the arsh He was God when he was on arsh Wohi jo mustaviye arsh tha Inna Allah has tawa ala arsh وہی جو مستویے عرش تھا خدا ہو کر اتر پڑا وہ مدینے میں مصطفیٰ ہو کر he came down in مدینہ and he became مصطفیٰ علیہ السلام so what's the difference between incarnation and this شیر this couplet but this is you know a poet is saying it please let me mention here such type of aqeedah or views or dogmas don't occur anywhere in the acknowledged sects, any of the acknowledged sects of Islam, of Muslims, in their official form. Poetry is something else, you know. وَالشُعَرَاءُ يَتَّبِعُهُمُ الْغَابُونَ أَلَمْ تَرَى أَنَّهُمْ فِي كُلِّ وَعَدٍ يَحِيمُونَ So actually, these poets, they are a different category altogether. Don't go after them. But you know, the official version of the Aqaid, of the acknowledged sects of Islam, they are absolutely free from this form of shirk. And now to appreciate, you know, how big the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on this ummah regarding this issue. Why it is? That should also be clear. This is the last Ummah. Muhammad was the last Masjid of Allah. If such a wrong thing had creeped in the official aqaid of the Muslimin, who was to come there now to rectify these things? None. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and protected this deen because this is the final deen. As the Prophet said, Ana akhirul muslimin wa antum akhirul umam. I am the last of the messengers and you are the last of the ummahs. You are the last ummah. So actually, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this type of zalala, this type of, you know, wrong ideas, wrong aqaid have not entered the field of Islam. Now please compare Jesus alayhi salatu was salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Do the Christians believe, do the Christians love Hazrat Masih more than the Muslims love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? They love. A Muslim might not be a practicing Muslim, but the deep love he has ingrained in his nature, in his heart. He might not be a practicing Muslim, but he has profound love for Muhammad. You know, not one hundredth of that love you can find in any Christian for Jesus. Then how come they declare Jesus to be son of Allah and none among the Muslims have till this date declared Muhammad to be son of Allah? Now this contrast will be more clear. Now you compare Hazrat Ali 
تو حضرت محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و رضی اللہ عنہ وٹ از پوزیشن از امتی اے فالوور اے ڈسائپل ہی از دی ماسٹر دی ٹیچر دی پروفٹ دی میسنجر دیر کین بی نو ریشیو پروپورشن بٹ یو نو دیر ہیو بین پیپل اینڈ دیر آر پیپل ٹوڈے ہو سی دیٹ علی از گاڈ دیر ہیو بین پیپل دی نو سیریز They say, Ali is God. He is God incarnate. And in so early days, during the caliphate of Hazrat Osman, people appeared who stood. And they gave their lives on it. Hazrat Ali punished them. Some of them, he burnt them alive. But they said, no, you are God. We claim you are God. You are only testing us. They gave their lives on this dogma. But nobody has said ever that Muhammad is God. Just have this, you know. The, the difference, how great it is. Now let me point to another thing. You will find among the illiterate people, both Sunnis and Shias, both, calling, Ya Ali Madad. They want help from Ali. Have you ever heard Ya Muhammad Madad? Just imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody says. So this is something very great, a very big blessing on this deen, on this ummah. And what was the mechanism? How Allah did it? How Allah saved this Ummah from this type of shirk? First of all, He made it clear many a times in the Quran that Muhammad is a human being. قُلْ إِنَّمَا نَبَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ Proclaim O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I am nothing but a human being. Innama ana basharum mislukum. Innama is kalimatu hasr. I explain what is meant in Arabic by kalimatu hasr. I am only a human being. I am a bashar. Qul innama ana basharum mislukum. Just like you. I am a human being. Just like you. I was also born of human parents. I also feel hunger. The Prophet had also to, you know, to tie a stone to his belly. But two stones. During the battle of Azab. To be able to sustain, you know, the hunger contractions. Stomach contracting due to hunger. He had to do it. Even when he was stoned, blood oozed out of his wounds. When he was injured in the face, blood gushed out like anything from his face. And he also was, for some time, he was unconscious. Quran makes all these things very clear, very clear. And at many points, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishes him. Why have you done Muhammad like this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I'm not going to translate, I don't have time. I'm only referring. Admonition coming to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the same thing happened. When you know, in the battle of Uhud, when he was injured, the Prophet said, كَيْفَ يَعْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا خَزَبُوا وَجْهَ نَبِيِّهِمْ بِالدَّمْ 
how can Allah, how will Allah guide those people to the right path who colored the face of their prophet with blood? And the admonition came, you know, in Surah Al-Aram, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْعَبْدِ شَيْءٍ O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you don't have any authority in your hand. إِمَّا يُعَظِّبُهُمْ It's in our authority. Maybe we punish them. Maybe we forgive them. You can't say this. إِنَّكَ لَا تَحَدِّي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحَدِّي مَنْ يَشَاهَ Oh Muhammad, it's not in your hand, your capacity, your authority to guide anybody to, a, to the right path. It's the prerogative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only He guides. Had He the power or, or authority to guide anybody to the right path, at least Abu Talib couldn't have gone from this world without having Iman and without reciting the Kalma of Shahada. So these things, you know, have been so repeatedly, so clearly mentioned in the Quran that Muhammad sallallahu was saved. Nobody said that he is son of Allah. Nobody said he is Allah incarnate. It's the biggest blessing, the biggest mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this ummah, on this deen. And secondly, Muhammad himself, over and above that, you know, whatever I have said from the Quran, over and above that, the Prophet ﷺ himself, he was so cautious. He didn't like the Sahaba, the companions to stand, you know, when he came, honoring him or respecting him, don't stand. And he didn't have any special position when he was sitting, just like other Muslims. He didn't have any special rug under him or somebody, you know, having some fan in his hand. Nothing. He was just like a human being, just like another Sahaba. And at times it became difficult for a visitor, newcomer, to identify who is Muhammad in this congregation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He kept himself at that level. And let me quote a hadith here. And that would be the end of this session. Once a Sahabi said, there was something going on. MashaAllah wa mashayta. Let it be as Allah wants and you want. MashaAllah wa mashayta. As Allah wishes and as you wish. The Prophet stopped him there and then. Ajaltani lillahi niddam. Have you made me equal to Allah? Only the Mashiach of Allah works. Fa'alul lima yasha. He is the only person who can do whatever he wants, who can do whatever he wishes. Not me. Don't associate myself with Allah. Don't make me equal to Allah. Don't make me partner to Allah. Ajal tani lillahi nidda. So that was, you know, these were the steps taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and by Prophet himself, which, you know, has saved this ummah from this worst form of shirk, that is the shirk fizzat. Aqulu qali haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisair al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله ما لنا رب سوى لا إله